One of the frustrating things about gardening, which also makes it a fun thing, is you're always trying to improve, always trying to do better or plan better. So I had the greenhouse pretty much set up the way I wanted and now I've changed my mind. Not really, but I found uh, these windows. That's one here. Let me see if I can back up for you. I have four of them. Apparently I had them in the back of a garage and found them the other day and said, you know what? Those would make great cold frames. But I didn't want to put them outside and build boxes for them to, to lay the window over top because yes, that protects them from the frost. But if I do it in the greenhouse, they're doubly protected and I might be able to grow all year long in those. So I'm rearranging and there's going to be a small transformation. I've got to take out some boxes over on this side. I need, I've got room for one right here and then maybe this box and that box. If I take two more boxes out, maybe three, I'll have room for all four of these windows because they are, I'm five foot, so they are 48 inches. And um, I will do one, two, three, four uh, cold frames in here. And it will be, I want tall box so that there's uh, about 12 to 18 inches of grow space dirt in it for the dirt portion but then I want at least two feet taller for the actual greens to grow. The goal is to be able to grow lettuce and things like that year-round. Um, it won't work for like tomatoes or anything like that. Um, in order to do that I would have to be able to heat the greenhouse. And I am considering how to do that. It will not be easy because I refuse to run electricity to it. So I'm gonna have to think of some sort of passive heating. Um, and that's trickier than um, I've been able to come up with so far. But next projects, I need to make the cold frames and I'll take pictures and step-by-step step through that. And then I have to redesign or reconfigure the water because I have three, let me see if I can turn you around and let you see, way up there, right there, are three 300 gallon IBC totes that I collect rainwater and use to water the garden with. I run them downhill to the greenhouse. It's not a huge hill, it's just slightly downhill, so it does give me some water pressure. And I run those downhill with a garden hose. I fill uh, black barrels like this. Uh, with a water spigot. Let me see if I can get that. And that gives me water to water with. Or I have a hose set up here. It comes under the black plastic, comes through the bottom of the greenhouse door. Let me see if I can tilt there. And then from there, I can run it all over the greenhouse. The problem is configuring it so that it hits every bed. And that's not as easy as it sounds. Then I have to turn around and do the same thing for outside. 
not easy and very time consuming to set it up in drip irrigation with a um, system that I only have to turn on once or twice a day. I had it set with a solar timer before and it was a beautiful thing because it only came on twice a day, ran for a half hour doing drip irrigation and I didn't have to touch it. It was lovely. But now I can't find that uh, timer anymore. They stopped making it and all the other timers are using uh, water pressure from like a faucet. I don't want to do that. I want to run it off the rainwater, not my well water. That way, if I have no electricity out here, it runs. So I'm going to have to do some thinking and some researching and a whole lot of planning. But I'm going to need some more materials as well. Okay, here we go. We've started. Box one is moved. Okay, now I have to clean the mess up. But the box is gone. I took the white sweet potatoes and moved them. So they're preserved until it's time. I'm gonna show you what I did. I took the box out of the greenhouse and I have put it here. So if all goes well, I'm going to get that filled with the dirt that it had in it already back into the greenhouse. You can see my mess. This is my compost bin, which I just set a um, tarp on top of at the moment and because I needed to move it. So gardening is never not messy, <laughs> but it's fun. All right, so here's what's going on all the way through here. These are goji berries in these first two bins. And then you can see the cardboard there. There's a pomegranate in the middle of that cardboard, but all the way around the cardboard is carrot seeds. Um, the cardboard is covering them up to keep them moist for a while till they start going. It'll probably be another four or five days. You can hear the chickens going. And then down the other side, the first bed is empty. The second bed right here, that has all kinds of things in it, arugula and some beets. The next bed after that, the third one down, this one has, um, uh, let's see what's in that. Radishes, two different kinds of radishes. So one that's going to be ready any day now. And then the next set of radishes, which is after that, I'm trying a different kind. These are white rad radishes. And then after that, I have lettuce, um, spinach, but that's about done, and yard long beans. And what else is in there? Oh, sugar snap peas. But I want to show you something else. The first of the raspberries are ready. Can you see these? Let's see. There we go. They're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And I can pull one off. Mm, these are so sweet. The problem I have, these have thorns. So the thorn ones I think are sweeter than the ones that don't have thorns. But while I'm out here, I can pick blackberries and raspberries and eat. So let me see, I'm gonna grab a raspberry off the thornless one. See how much darker these are? Let me take you back over here to the thorn ones. We separated them out so we don't get them confused. Let me see if I can show you the difference in color. So this is the thornless versus the thorns 
in color. That one's pretty sweet too. Not as sweet as the um, thorned one, but pretty darn close. I'll eat it either way. Back to work. I have dirt to dig. It's a little warmer out now. We're in the 70s. It was in the 60s when I started this. But I now have the bed gone, most of the dirt up. And I'm going to start on the, the next bed right there uh, in just a short bit. Then I've taken that one and put it out front. The next one's going out there too. And I'll start digging it up. See that green thing right there? That's a volunteer potato. So I'm going to have to figure out, will it transplant or not? So another experiment. We'll see how that one works out, but we're trying. I want to show you one other thing. Remember the other day I did dehydrated tomatoes? I guess it was last week. Well, I crumpled up some uh, eggshells because I have a lot of chickens and we have a lot of eggs. But I want to show you they came up and we have little tomato plants. Now, that was for the one that I did on video. The week before, I did another one. And those are from all of that, plus all of these. I did them in a container, and I took them out of here and put them in here. And I have a lot of, a lot of tomatoes ready to go. Uh, so I will have my yellow tomatoes this year. I'm excited. Now, back to work. There's always something to do out here, even if it's just planning the next big thing. I'm hoping to start my big project on building these cold frames as soon as I get these bins out of here. So later this evening, maybe? Even though we have the shade cloth on the greenhouse, it's now 80 degrees with 42% humidity. I'm hot and sweating, <laughs> but par for the course. But eh. anyway, bed number three is done. Hat's going back on because it keeps the sun out of my eyes. And I still don't know what to do with that potato. We may move it as is in one giant clump or... I don't know. I don't have a plan B yet for that. We'll see how it goes. I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted. Uh, we have managed to get all the beds out. Remember that potato? There it is. All alone. I think I'm going to put it in a bed as is and then fill dirt on top of it as we go. But so this is what I was going for. A cold frame. So I built these today, and basically what's going to happen is I'm going to fill up most of this uh, about mm, halfway with dirt. And the hope is when I put the window on top like this and hinge it, I'll be able to grow some vegetables in the wintertime. That's, that's the plan. But for now, I'm going to start building them filling them full of dirt and hoping for the best for the winter because once I get this place sealed up, take the shade cloth off because at the moment I have a shade cloth on and that keeps the temperature a little cooler in the summer. Also off to the side, you can see that you can see the cucumbers out here. Well, that is where it's rolled up. So if I didn't roll it up, it'd be about 110 in here usually during the day. So it's a sauna. <laughs> if you want to sweat, come in here. So I have to roll it up or I want to keel over and die. So I've got the one lone potato 
And I think I'm going to get one more box here and another box over where the potato is. I'll have four. And I'm going to try out this thing. It's an experiment. We'll see what happens. We are getting rain this weekend, so I don't know how much I'll get done. I've got two boxes done except for hinging the window frame on top. And uh, I need two more boxes to go. We're making this just out of scrap wood that we have here. And um, let's see, it should be it should be interesting. It's an experiment. So basically, it's a box with a window frame on top. So it looks like that. There we go. And I've got them spaced enough apart so that I fit in between in case I need to hook the window frame up and, I don't know, weed or plant or dig around in there or something. But that's that. And let me show you. I took the beds that were in here, took them out, and they are now... Two beds full of sweet potatoes, plus, let's see if I can get more sweet potatoes, the elderberry. This is the small elderberry. It's quite large. Um, if I stand right here at the elderberry, it's still way up there. I got one dead branch, obviously, needs to be taken off, but it's, uh, oh, I don't know, 10 feet wide. It, it's pretty large, but if you look at it, they smell good. Um, they're blooming, and everywhere they bloomed and the flowers fall off, every single one of these little teeny tiny pods are going to be berries. And usually, I think I'm a little um, off on my dates right now, because usually I don't have this many flowers this early in the season because by mid-July, I usually have, I'm picking berries and I think it might be a little early this year. So anyway, I've got three more grow bags of sweet potatoes and more sweet potatoes on the back porch that still have to go into the ground. So it's been an eventful couple days. The tomatoes are getting big. I'll take you over there and show you those real quick. And right now I'm like stepping over messes because I keep, there you go. The tomatoes are taller than my kneecap at the moment. So that's a good thing. They're getting there. We'll see how uh, long it takes. I've got uh, quite a few with flowers. So I'm hoping it won't be long. Cucumbers are down at the end. Let me see if I can all the way down there. And they're going pretty good. I'm gonna have to start clipping them up soon so that the vines go up the netting instead of across the ground. Um, it makes it easier to find the cucumbers and you don't have to keep lifting up the vines. They're just dangling there waiting for you to pick them. So, Anyway, I am going to hop off the here for now and get back to work. I have two more boxes to build and I'm done watering for tonight.